Uh, good afternoon. I'm here to provide the uh, health update on COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, so today I'm going to start by saying that uh, I can report that we have 6,479 people who have now recovered from COVID-19 in Australia. And that's a really, really encouraging number. We can, I can report that there are 506 active cases of COVID-19 across the country. Um, and that is a, a number, again, that uh, we're going to start reporting um, to, to produce a, a very positive message to all Australians about the great achievements we've seen. I can tell you that in the last 24 hours, there have been 15 new cases reported in Australia. Sadly, also one additional death. All of these deaths are, of course, tragedies for those family and friends of those who've lost their lives. And I, I pass on my condolences. Um, that's 101 deaths now across Australia. We have 39 people who are still in hospital and seven of those are in intensive care. So from these figures, we can see the continued suppression of that spread across the country. Uh, and all Australians should, of course, be, um, be heartened by that information and uh, encouraged by the enormous effort that everyone has made to, uh, to flatten this curve and contain this pandemic. But what's really important for us now is not to drop the ball. We've seen evidence and pictures in the news and on the television of those who've clearly quite quickly move back to the old ways that we do things and we must all follow those important physical distancing rules. As we see the relaxing of the restrictions, it's up to all of us to play our part in making sure that we don't see outbreaks and we don't see a resurgence of this disease across Australia. So I encourage everyone to follow those clear instructions we've made and also obviously for those who've chosen as yet not to download the COVID Safe app, I do once again encouraging you to do so because it's an important part of us maintaining those, the sustained effort on co containing the outbreaks and so that we continue to return back to our normal lives. So thank you. New South Wales has moved to open pubs and restaurants with 50 people. What are the chances if someone's infected walks into a pub with 50 people of, of at least one person getting the virus? Okay, so yes, we've seen New South Wales announce um, more people can now go into pubs, restaurants and clubs. The greatest priority for everyone is for no one to go there who is sick. So if you've got symptoms, if you're unwell, we really do encourage you to stay home and get tested. Of course, as we do relax these restrictions, we will see potential for outbreak. And that's where it is. If anyone has any symptoms of whatsoever of cold, flu-like illness, they need to quickly call their doctor and get tested. But with the COVID app, and with our enormous amount of effort by our public health officials, if there is to be a, um, a transmission, then we should be able to address it quickly. Was New South Wales government provided with any modelling um, in regards to, to helping them reopen the pubs and restaurants? All of the states and territories, as well as the Commonwealth, are doing a range of modelling work continually as our evidence base about the Australian outbreak grows. So uh, New South Wales may well have done further modelling um, and they continue to monitor the sort of outbreaks they're seeing within their own state. But were they given any national advice before they made their own step here? No, the decision to change the restrictions are those of New South Wales in advice from their Chief Health Officer and for their Premier. Um, we now have a Deputy Chief Medical Officer in charge of mental health. What work has been done um, by, by that officer? And are they looking at things like the, the health impacts of long-term unemployment? So Dr. Ruth Fine has been with us for a week, um, and so she is already out there working. We already had a mental health plan and an enormous investment in that mental health plan. So there has been a lot of existing work already going on. Ruth, will, as she joins us now this in the coming weeks, will continue to concentrate that. And obviously the impact on every Australian from this uh, pandemic will be considered and we know the impact of long-term unemployment on everyone's well-being so it, it will be part of our thinking. And um, regards to the app, is contact tracing um, working? 
as far as you're aware? Yes, so we have um, had a confirmation from Victoria. Obviously, we are, don't have access to the data. Victoria have been able to successfully identify someone who was tested positive, who had downloaded the app, and they were able to use that to, uh, to trace those that they've been in close contact with. So yes, the app is working. And do we have any data on how many people that that person came into contact with? No, because that's kept confidential for all the reasons we've explained before. Um, it's important that we protect people's privacy, so certainly at the Commonwealth, we do know that it's been used successfully, but as to the details, no, we're not aware of that. So do you think um, pubs and clubs and restaurants in New South Wales should be asking people whether they've got the app when they come to the door, or at least asking them for mobile numbers and things? No, we've been really clear, um, and the legislation was outlined by the Health Minister, that there can be no requirement for anyone to ask you or require you to download the app. That's um, actually in law, and that requirement, and so no. Um, obviously, we would like those pubs and clubs to encourage people, but there can be no set requirement for people to do that. Yep. So the, the question is about the use of masks in public for the general public. And the advice provided from the uh, infection control expert group to uh, HPPC is there's no evidence of the need for general use of masks in the community. Masks are, of course, designed and intended for healthcare professionals, and that's where we should be using them. So there's no recommendation to use either the surgical masks or cloth, cloth masks in the community. We have seen evidence of that in other countries, but they have got a very different situation about the prevalence of COVID-19 in their community. That's not so here in Australia. Okay. Um, this, so this has been the, the longest period we've had without a national cabinet meeting. Has that caused any problems in terms of getting advice out to the states and so on? Well, our HPPC has continued to meet pretty much every day. We have been um, grateful for the opportunity to have some weekend days off, but our HPPC has continued to meet on a very regular basis. So we, we go on with our work as intended, um, and we are developing, of course, our advice for National Cabinet when it meets again next week. But um, no, that, no, the fact that the National Cabinet has not met has not meant that we're all still continuously talking to each other and cooperating on this outbreak. And do you know what the, the key issues might be for National Cabinet next Friday? No, I'm not in a position to, uh, to describe what might go to National Cabinet. That's up to National Cabinet to decide. Okay, thank you. Thank you.